Welcome to Just Between Us, a podcast powered by the Corey Johnson Program for Post-Traumatic Healing in Boston. Every week, we're going to focus on ways to heal from the devastating impact of collective trauma on our world. My name is Reverend Liz Walker. And I'm Judell Cummins. So let's get started. Judell, of course, the whole country is, is reacting, still reacting, to the guilty verdict in the murder trial of the former police officer, Derek Chauvin, convicted of killing George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Many of us watched the entire trial. I know I watched a lot of it, and I was so deeply moved. I was traumatized by the trial, mm. but I was really moved by the emotional testimony of 18-year-old Darnella Frazier, whose cell phone video of the policeman's knee on Mr. Floyd's neck went viral and, and was viewed millions of times around the world, effectively changing the world and I think changing the outcome of this trial. One news commentator called it the star witness of the trial. I was thinking about the impact of what this young woman did, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and the trauma of what she's experienced uh, and how that's gonna all stay with her. What do you think about the trauma of what she, or, or what she did, either one of those? Right, I mean, nowadays everything is through our phones, right? And so the idea that um, something bad is about to happen and I'm going to record it. That I don't think that was ever really a thing, right, Reverend Liz? When you were growing up, it, 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 we didn't have no cameras no, or anything like that. No, we didn't like have that. anything like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for me, it's like I'm glad that she caught it on video, and at the same time, I wish I didn't watch the video because hmm. because now it's like you know something that you I just can't unsee that. Um, and now I know what that looks like. And I was talking to a friend early this morning and we were just talking about, well, when you see something like that, you can't unsee it. And it really is a trauma that you continue to now live with, although you maybe didn't you know, have a relationship with him. So it's just that collective trauma that now we all know about. And it's good that they were able to use this evidence in the trial, but at the same time, now it feels as though we all have to carry around that image. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's just, it, it's not a comfortable place to be. It isn't a comfortable place. Yeah. It, it's that's a really good point. It's it's the worst and the best because mm -hmm. she's acted on it, right. and now that's changed some things. Right. But she had to see it. You know, I grew up a long time ago in the fifties, <laughs> and and the first thing I remember that stayed with me all of my life was the Emmett Till murder. Mm -hmm. Emmett Till was a young uh, uh, boy who lived in Chicago. He was fourteen years old. Went down south and was murdered for allegedly, I think it was in Mississippi, it might have been in Alabama, but he was murdered for allegedly uh, accosting uh, yeah. mm -hmm. a, a white woman. Mm -hmm. I think he only whistled at her. I don't yeah. even think he did anything, yeah. and he was murdered. Mm -hmm. His mother then uh, decided at his funeral to show what they did to her baby, and that didn't go viral because that was in the 50s, but it, it went all over the world. It was on the cover of Jet Magazine. I'll never forget this. I, I couldn't have been more than four or five years old. Mm -hmm. It stayed with me. But, so the trauma of it was horrible, but it also was pivotal in, in, in kind of ushering in the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and the fight for justice at that moment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Floyd, his death, horrible death, right. is pivotal mm -hmm. right now. So. You're right. It's it's horrible yeah. that you had to see it. Yeah. But think about the child who Darnella was just going to the store. Right, right, right. And I know some people, you know, were you know going on, going on and getting on her um, on social media about oh you should have done something or oh how could you record this or whatever the case may be. But it's it's just I don't know. You know, it, thank you, Darnella. Right. And at the same time, am I saying thank you for ex recording this and now we all see it? Like, well, it, she didn't tell me to watch the video, right? So I sometimes think like, what is it about human nature or about all of us that w we want to see, we want to know? We, we don't know, we kind of know what to expect. And this is our personal decision to watch it. So we're inviting this in, but a part of us wants to connect. And maybe part of the reason why so many, you know, the video went viral is one, because we know that uh, there is a lot of history in this country of, you know, police brutality, especially against black men. But we also want to, we, we want to know the truth. And I think part of the reasons why we explore and we're curious is because we, we want to see for ourselves. 
it's called bearing witness. Mm -hmm. It's what we do in the trauma program. Yeah. We say we have to bear each other's pain mm -hmm. in order for us to collectively heal. Mm -hmm. And and I think what happens is people don't bear pain. We just mm -hmm. we would rather turn a blind eye. We don't want. I don't want to see. It. I mean, Who well, I don't know. It? I don't know if I have the capacity. It's like, Reverend Liz, I'm just trying to live out, you know, my life, trying to make decisions, risk assessment, all that kind of stuff. And now you're asking me to take on something that yeah. I didn't ask for. This is not. Part of my plan. <laughs> You're right. It's not part of my plan, but it's part of the the big picture plan mm -hmm. of justice in this world. Yeah. You're on your way to the store right here on Warren Street, mm -hmm. and you see this. It wasn't right what she saw. That's right. why she said she took the video. She knew it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's bearing witness to the problems and the issues in our mm -hmm. country, and I think it's it's done in 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 order to change them. Yeah. What I think is really interesting is for her right it wasn't something that she was asking for but once the video is out there now everybody else gets to decide whether or not they want to see it you know for her it was like well i have no choice i mean i could go into the store with the cases but for everyone else it's like you get to choose how does that how do you think that uh plays into how we're all trying to connect or disconnect from uh this trial or just the whole you know i think the world needed to see it mm -hmm. i think it's unfortunately what people in our neighborhood see most too often. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean just, I'm not in just indicting the, the police. I think mm -hmm. they have to be accountable for what they do, and that's mm -hmm. what this was. But how we treat each other, how humans treat each other. Mm -hmm. The only way to change something is to name something. And, and what Darnella did with her video, with her uh, cell phone, was she named, look at this. This is not right. right. This is happening right on my street. This is not anything I wanted. I'm sure she was just like you. <laughs> They say she's very quiet and mm -hmm. unassuming. She's not looking for celebrity. She's not trying to have her 15 minutes of fame. Right. In, in the trial, the thing that stuck with me was she said that she has, she can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. she, she, in her, in, at night, she apologizes to George Floyd because she didn't do more. Mm -hmm. That child shouldn't have had to bear that responsibility. She, she, she kind of acted on the moment. And she did the right thing. And... Uh, just think, poor Emmett Till, when he was... Oh, yeah, there was... Nobody was around to shoot a video of it. No. And that would have gone... If his mother hadn't had the, the vision and the wisdom and her pain to say, you won't share this oh, pain no. with me, hmm. we wouldn't have known. I don't think any of that... We don't want any of this to happen. But if it no. happens and when it happens, you have to bear witness, I think. Mm -hmm. Should it be a... What, for some people, is this like a forced thing? Like, are you forcing me or are no. you saying... I have to, you know, I have to bear witness because I have no choice or. I think it's yeah. self-selective. Mm -hmm. I don't think, like you said, very right. eloquently that Darnella didn't have a choice. No, we all get to choose whether or not we want to We get to it, choose. But, yeah. I think that's exactly mm -hmm. the issue. So now that you are bearing witness, what are you going to do about it? Mm. And I think that's the kind of seminal moment that this country's in right now. I think that's why we're all kind of paying such close attention to this verdict. I think we're trying to figure out now, where does this take us? Does something like this change your perspective? Does it change your view? Have you even processed it? And now I'm asking you that, Judell. Is this something that you process, you think about, or would you rather just move on? And, and I think you can be honest, because I think mm -hmm. you're speaking for all of us. Yeah, yeah, I think... <laughs> If I could speak for myself, um, yeah, I've processed it, and and I think I, just moving. I'm just moving. I'm just moving forward. Um, and as information continues to come up, I'll listen. But I know that I'm still responsible for my life and everything that goes on within me. And how I interact with someone is just as important as what is going on in this world, right? Like, I feel as though if I can be better as a person, then the world is better because at least I'm better, right? And if everybody just try to really become the better versions of themselves, then we're hitting on the w issues of the world one person at a time. Um, so I just find, like, for me, just get better, do better, be better treat people better um and yeah i don't think any better words could be said i think you've you've summed it up beautifully judel i think that's what you take this pain and and this is what religion is about right mm -hmm. this is what christianity is about is that something horrible happens yeah. 
but it can be turned around to do something good. Yeah. And, and so that's all we got right yeah. now. And uh, if you do no more than that, I think you've done something for Mr. Floyd and you've done something for the world. Believe it or not, Judell, that's it for this week's <laughs> Just Between Us. Uh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah, we always have much to talk about, and we certainly hope you'll continue to join us in these ongoing conversations. If you want to learn more about the Corey Johnson program, visit our website at rpcsocialimpactctr.org. I'm going to repeat that, rpcsocialimpactctr.org. Org. It's a weekly community-based conversation on trauma education and healing powered by the Roxbury Faith-Inspired Community-Based Clinically Supported Program. This podcast serves to continue those conversations. So thanks for being with us and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Judell. Thank you, Reverend Liz. <laughs>